测量星体的距离和运转是天文学其中一个重要领域。人类数百年来都是从地球用光学望远镜编制星表，直至两项太空任务改变了测量的方式。伊巴古和盖亚太空望远镜让科学家取得更庞大、更精准的观测数据。二零二二年度绍伊夫天文学奖颁予莱纳特·林德格伦以及迈克尔·佩里曼。以表扬他们在这两项任务的贡献。这里是瑞典的隆德天文台。莱纳特·林德格伦教授对其中一座望远镜很有感情，他研究星体超过四十年。一九八零年，在隆德大学获得博士学位。When I started to study astronomy. It was still in the old observatory in Lund, and there, in a room next to the lecture hall, was an old brass instrument that fascinated me from the very first time I saw it. When it was explained to me how it worked, I realized that although it had not been used for a very long time, it was very ingeniously designed to do. Very accurate measurements, and every detail of the instrument was carefully thought out to maximize the accuracy that you can reach. And that made me very fascinated of this particular field of astronomy. 天体测量学提供的重要数量支撑天文学和天体物理学几乎所有分支。宇宙有数之不尽的星体。公元前约两百年，希腊天文学家喜帕恰斯记录了夜空中约一千颗恒星的位置，并绘制星表。天体测量学让我们知道恒星的位置、速度以及与地球的距离。科学家不断追求更精确的数字。I had studied mathematics and physics at the university here in Lund, and There was the possibility to take an optional course in astronomy as part of the physics education, and I chose to do that. And it really got me interested. I had been interested in astronomy for for many years as an amateur, but I had not really thought until then that it might be possible to make a career of it. 一九八九年。欧洲太空总署发射伊巴古太空望远镜，当时天体测量学在精确度方面一直苦无突破，因为用地球上的望远镜观星受到大气层影响。伊巴古号围绕地球运行，测量银河系的恒星，方法就是透过观察视差。We have the sun, we have the Earth orbit around the sun, and if you look at the distant star from two points in the orbit. Six months apart in time, then you will see the star in two different, slightly different directions. Of course, this angle here is much smaller in reality, but that is twice the parallax, and the parallax is usually denoted by this Greek letter pi. And once we have determined the parallax, we can easily get the distance to the star, which is simply one over this parallax. And if this is expressed in arc seconds. We get the distance in parsecs. You need to know the distances to whatever you are observing, whether it is stars or galaxies or quasars. And uh, the parallaxes provide the first step in the distance ladder in the universe. It can give us very precise distances to the nearest stars, and then this information can be used to build. A ladder of distances further and further out in the universe, even to the most distant objects. Linda Gerlund 曾经是伊巴古号科学团队的成员，有份参与1976至1997年的任务。他开创了很多相关的研究方法和演算法，例如光学平面和胶平面设计、仪器校准、动态平滑、双星分析和外星系参照系等等。他还带领盖亚号数据处理及分析联盟，处理在任务中收集到的大量数据。T 
he acts as a sort of intellectual leader. He is the one who understands important things about how various different parts of the machine work and when there is a technical problem the solution he comes to will generally speaking be the right one he will come to it first and then he will explain it to everyone who needs to understand it in this you know very precise very clear way 同事说林德格伦在教学时同样严谨 He's careful uh, he's mathematical and he likes to solve mathematical problems I think and I think he is intrigued by designing working out how instruments work like Hipparchus like Gaia he applies the same care and methodology to his teaching as well I've had the the luck to interact with him over teaching matters I believe he is a much liked teacher Ying国的巴斯有不少十八至十九世纪建筑。迈克尔·佩里曼博士和太太朱莉亚在这座旧城漫步，邵逸夫讲是佩里曼多年努力的回报。We've been together for a long time, so I was there right from the beginning when he became project scientist for Hipparchos at 26, which is amazing to think of now. Um, so yes, I mean, it's, it's something he's very passionate about, and therefore I'm interested in it from that point of view, but it is an incredibly interesting subject anyways. Peilimann最初在欧洲太空总署 得知一八古号任务，当时他是剑桥大学的研究生，这项任务令他很好奇。虽然当时他并非研究恒星。I was quite ignorant about stars, but from the work that had been done already, I could see how important this mission was. Uh, there weren't queues of people lining up to do this. I think astrometry was perceived then to be a fairly um, arcane and uh, not a particularly exciting field. What captivated me was the beauty of the instrumental principles, the mathematical elegance of the whole principles underlying this, the measurement of star positions. Well, I think Michael started with a very strong mathematical background, uh, which he had and he, he used when he did his uh, PhD in the radio astronomy group in, in Cambridge. Uh, on radio astronomy and cosmology. Somebody there must have recognized that Michael had abilities in mathematical comprehension, which would allow him to see the, the, the mission with an overview and see the, uh, the, the, the elements of that mission which would need to be built in order to uh, get it to operate and, and produce the results. 一八古号团队所得的数据涵盖多达十二万颗恒星。而欧洲太空总署没有停下脚步，在展开另一个太空望远镜任务。这项任务名为“盖亚全天天体测量干涉仪”，是更大、更精密的太空望远镜，运用新颖强大的技术，延续一八古号的工作。We didn't have to concern ourselves with so much with the principles. Would this work in principle? Um, we could focus instead on the technological complexities of building this massively superior beast. The main mirror of Hipparchos is about 30 centimeters in, in diameter. The main mirror of Gaia is one and a half meters in diameter. A, a big difference is that with Hipparchos we could essentially only observe one star at a time, but for Gaia we can observe thousands of stars at the same time because they are simultaneously recorded on these detectors. So that means that Gaia is vastly more efficient than Hipparchus was, just in terms of how it is using the available time. Gaia号已经测量了约20亿颗恒星,仍然有大量数据有待公布。最近一次公布数据是在今年6月, 
。这些数据帮助美国太空总署的新视野号太空船在冥王星之外航行，也有助预测足以摧毁地球的小行星撞击。And it will have implications for many things outside of the field that we would have called classical astrometry. It embeds itself in fundamental physics in in so many different ways. Many of the ways we've not even thought about yet. And we'll, some of the some of the papers are coming out are the most amazing things that you never would have thought would have come out. The crystallization of the cores of of white dwarfs into huge diamonds and you know things like this. 盖亚号会继续收集、观测数据，并传送回来研究，带来更多新发现。We can build up the picture of how galaxies form, how they evolve, and what they and why they look like they do now. Gaia is going to measure its own、uh, population of planets, and my own predictions there、uh, and and others. Is that we should be able to detect perhaps 30,000, 50,000 planets with Gaia. So compare that with the present census of 5,000. What is so interesting about these、uh, planetary systems is that they're going to be things that are more like our own solar system than things that have been discovered up until now. That is so exciting because it will signal some of these systems. Which are going to be perhaps like the Earth. Perhaps they're going to harbor Earth-like planets in 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 orbit around them.